Globe winners. Hey, this is Coach JC, and I want to welcome you to another episode of the Win All Day podcast show. I am so stoked right now about our guest, guys. I cannot wait to introduce him. This is my main man. This is probably one of the greatest uh, rewarding episodes I will ever do because of my guest. But before we introduce him, you know what time it is. If you're a frequent listener, it's time for our Win All Day winning confession. You know what we believe at Win All Day. You can't live a winning life if you're speaking words of, uh, of defeat and losing words. So if it's your first time, feel free to repeat after me. Today is my day. Today is my day. Nothing will get in my way. Nothing will get in my way. Of me being the best. Of me being the best. Version of me. Version of moi. I am here on purpose. I'm here on purpose. I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I am strong. I am strong. I am passionate. I am passionate. I am fearless. I am fearless. I choose faith. I choose faith. I am a winner. I am a winner, baby. I will win. I will win. And win all day. And win all day. Let's go, baby. Day. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> hey, this Let's is Coach go, baby. I want to welcome you again to the Win All Day podcast show with my guest. I just brought him on the screen. This is the one and only Moses Ihambe. I call Bro. him Hollywood. What's What's up, good. Hollywood? What's good, Jay? <laughs> good to Bye, see you, man. man. Winning, Welcome. winning, winning. <laughs> Welcome to the Win All Day podcast show, bro. I'm so Sorry. excited. I'm so excited to have you, man. And um, let me just do this real quick. Let me tell everybody really quick how you and me met and how you how we got to where we are today, really quick. And then I'm gonna throw it over you to make a, a, a an introduction and just tell everybody where you came from and how you got to where you are today. And then we're gonna have an amazing, life changing, impactful show for the listeners on the other side. Me and Moses met when I was a strength coach at Oral Roberts University. I don't even remember what year that was. But he came. 2004. What year was it? 2004, baby. The 2004. University. Moses came to Oral Roberts University in Tulsa from the great country of Texas, right? And, um, yeah. and we, uh, we connected. Moses uh, played five years at ORU. I was a strength coach. And um, we're going to get into some of that and some of the things that we've been blessed to do. But... I tagged him with the title Hollywood back in the day when he was at ORU. And back, back. And, 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 and I don't I don't, I don't think I don't think I don't think people really understand why I gave you that title of Hollywood, right? I gave you the title of Hollywood because when Moses walks into a building, when Moses would walk into the practice gym, when Moses would walk onto the court, when Moses would walk into the, the locker room, when Moses would show up, his presence would change an environment. Come on. And so I noticed that and I said, man, I feel like it's showtime. I feel like, like, like I'm around a, a Hollywood actor. I feel like I'm around a celebrity. I feel like I'm around a pro athlete already because Moses was being, it, when you got around Moses, it was like the environment the atmosphere changed that Moses brought such a, a temperature. He changed the temperature of the room. Come on. So that's Come on. why I started telling him, Hollywood, when you get around Moses, you're going to feel like you can accomplish the world. Anything's possible. And I started to call Moses Hollywood. And I still call him Hollywood to this day. Um, and maybe, 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 maybe it's a little because he likes to show off and shoot the three. I don't know. <laughs> but the reason, the reason I call him Hollywood is because I believe that Moses, Moses um, always showed up with purpose on purpose and changed the environment that he would uh, step into. And so Moses Hambe, Hollywood, you had an amazing journey in a basketball career. You are now a coach in the NBA. And I want to throw it over to you, man. Just give everybody a little background, you know, where you started in Dallas, you know, coming to ORU, playing overseas, family life, uh, now yeah. where you're at today. And just let's let the people that may not know you, right, let them in the life of Moses Ihambe, give a formal introduction and how we got to where we are today. Bro. Man, thank you so much, Jay. And I must say, the fact that you called me Hollywood since the beginning, man, it kind of kind of spoke where spoke this into existence you know what i'm saying uh grow into a mountain not to shrink into a grain of sand and that's 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 how i i see my life at this time um just just being who god has intended me to be um and i just want i want to thank you for being who you are and, and kind of shaping me into to the man that i am today man and um i, I really do appreciate you um uh, but for all, all you guys out there i am moses ihambi um, AKA <laughs> Hollywood, let's go. 
<laughs> I'm from uh, I'm from Arlington, Texas. You know, uh, born and raised. I went to a, a, a school out there called uh, Mansfield Summit, um, and you know, come from a, a, a Christian household. You know, my father's a minister. Uh, my mother, you know, she she led um, on, on the worship team and whatnot. You know, we're constantly in church, constantly in church, man, to the point where I kind of missed out on some of my, my my high school memories. You know, no parties and all that kind of jazz. I had to go to church. I had to play the drums, baby. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but it was it was great because that shaped me. It molded me. Um, it, it, it helped me to just be the man that I am today. Um, but you know, went to went to um, <clears throat> Mansfield Summit, played ball there uh, a good four years, and you know, got recruited to to play some basketball collegiately. Now and got a couple um, uh, school visits. You know, I visited about four of them, and right when I Right when I went on my visit to Oral Roberts University, it was like, I honestly felt like the Lord was speaking to me. This is what I have for you, right? And when I felt that, I was like, whoa, man, I've been to Nickel State, Long Island University and all these other schools on visits. And I never got this feeling. Why do I have this feeling, right? So stepped on campus, met all the guys, met Coach JC, um, and I just loved it. So I got in Coach, Coach Sutton's uh, um, uh, office and I was like, yo, Coach, Man, I don't even need to meet anybody. I, I, I'm ready to sign right now. You know, Coach Sub was kind of surprised or whatnot and um, reached out to my parents. It's like, yo, I'm going to go to Old Roberts University. And they were excited, so excited. I'm like, well, no, I don't get school paid for it, but golly, you know. But they're like, no, we really do feel um, that you, you really heard the voice of God, right? Because you're going to the school. Because apparently, so I have an aunt that kind of, she's spoken things in my, my father's ministry that has come to pass. Um, and she, she had a meeting with my parents about maybe a month or two before I got my opportunity at ORU. And she was like, I feel like God is telling me that Moses needs to go, is going to go to Oral Roberts University because that's where he's going to find his blessing. And that's where he's going to find his wife. Um, and immediately I was like, yo, that's crazy. You know, I just had that feeling out of nowhere. And then it's just confirmed through this story that she didn't even know anything about me and Ball and Old Roberts University, and then boom, you know. So wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up. So you had offers, scholarships to other schools. Yeah. You didn't have a scholarship offer to ORU. I didn't. No, I bro, didn't. I, have, I didn't. So, so I didn't even know that. So my bro, my story, what brought me to ORU, right? Basketball initially in '99. I had offers and things to go to other universities to play ball back in Jersey. I had a praying mom, like your praying aunt, Oral Roberts, the guy Oral Roberts came to my church growing up and I learned that he had this college. I was like, I'll never go to Oklahoma. I'll never go to a school called Oral Roberts. And my mom started praying and the doors of the other universities started to close. And we, we went to visit these schools and wow. didn't have peace about them. And I went to ORU with one week left to enroll to walk wow. on the basketball team with no scholarship because I was planning on going to these other schools, bro. I didn't even know that about you. So you, so you come and this, this adds more to your story and why this is powerful. You gave up scholarship opportunities to go to a school because you had peace about it. And we know that you, your steps are ordered and you were led. How many people, how many people in life, Moses, they are, they are making decisions every single day based off of what they want their desires, yeah. desires of the world, and not from the spirit or the voice or whatever you want to call it. And so you gave up money, a scholarship, to go to Oral Roberts University to be obedient because that's where you feel God called you to be. Bro, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I'll direct your path. Oh, I see. I saw it as acknowledging God. Okay, God, like Oral Roberts University, bro, they, they weren't doing anything. You know, we had all these other schools that, you know, they're well-known and different things like that, great cities. And, and then it's Tulsa, Oklahoma. But when you get that feeling, bro, you, you got you got to rock with it. You got to you gotta lean with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. that's actually, I mean, I'll get into it a little bit more, but that's sort of how my professional career kind of came to an end, just being obedient to what God is, is was showing me in a sense, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know how others don't, I don't, I don't know how others do it when, they, when they're not led by, by what, what God wants them to do. Bro, in a sense. But that's I, so powerful, know. man. That's so powerful. Come on, bro. So, Absolutely. So you, so, you, so you commit to ORU, you step on the campus of ORU, 
right? Yeah. You're, you're a very good basketball player. You're a star in Arlington, right? And freshman year, freshman year, you're like, man, I'm going to hoop. I'm going to do my thing. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, coach comes to you and says, hey, Mo, we're going to redshirt you, right? <laughs> well, that was, yeah, that was sophomore year, though. Oh, yeah. that was sophomore year. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, when, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. When, God, when God speaks, bro. <laughs> Like, like this is my first, my first experience with, you know, um, feeling like this is what God wants for me. Okay. This is going to be dope. Like, okay. I'm obedient. I'm a roll. And I, I just felt like everything was going to be handed to me on a silver platter. Right. All right. Big man on campus, freshman. Let's go, man. I got on campus first year of, of, of playing collegiate basketball. I didn't even play. It was, it was so frustrating, but I was so glad that I had people like yourself that I surrounded myself with to keep me encouraged and, and elevated and, uh, and lifted because like my mind was just going like, man, wh why am I here? God, where are you? Why, why? You know what I'm saying? You told me that you told me to come to this university. I could have been over at whatever university doing my thing, you know, but I'm here at this private school and I'm not even playing. Like, what's up? You so, know? You're, and, so, you're, so you're questioning at this point, maybe even the decision, maybe did I hear from yeah. God? What am I doing? And so, Talk to us a little about that time, right? Because I think there's people listening and watching right now that your story might not look exactly how you thought it was going to look. You're there freshman year. You're, you walk in expecting to play. You walk in expecting to be the man on campus, right? You had scholarships other places. Freshman year, you don't get the playing time. You start, yeah. to, get, you start to get defeated, right? Yeah. Mentally, you start to question what's going on. Yeah. Um, how did you stay at that time Focus to not quit, not give up, not transfer, not walk out of the calling that you know, hey, I'm supposed to be here, but there's so many people that say, wait, it doesn't look exactly how I want it to look overnight, yeah. right? I expect the miracle to happen today. I want instant yeah. gratification. And when it doesn't yeah. look exactly how I thought it should look, I jump ship, I abandon ship. What was for you the decision to say, I'm not going to transfer, I'm not going to leave, I'm going to stay the course? How did you do that at that time, bro? Bro, so I took the M E and I replaced it with the H E. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Bro, <laughs> I got to the point where it was like, okay, man, yeah, it's all about me. Yeah, me, me, and mostly Hambi. I'm here. I'm here. You know, let's do this. Yo, yo. Right. And then it got to the point like, man, it really is not about me. It's about the person that placed me in this situation, the, the man upstairs that placed me into this, this situation and that gave me the 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 inkling to be here. Then I started to focus on my relationship with God. Like my faith just grew, grew even deeper. Like it was like, man, I got to the point where I was like, man, I wasn't placed here just for basketball. I was placed here because it's a powerful university and it creates whole people for the whole world. I was here because I needed to surround myself. You are who you surround yourself with. I was able to meet Coach JC. I was able to, able to meet the Chris Hartz. I was able to meet just, just all the different people that, uh, that encouraged me, that, that challenged me, that placed me up on stages to, 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 get, to, to speak to individuals and kind of cultivate that gifting that I have now, in a sense, right? Um, but I feel wow. like once I got that, dude, like everything shifted. The bro. focus got off of me. And like even like the story of Joseph, bro. You remember the story of Joseph? Whenever God gave him a dream, he went through all the crap that he went through. Even with that dream, he thought, yo, this is going to be dope. But it went totally backwards. But it wasn't until he got into that cave, into the, um, the dungeon with the, the, the cup bearer and the, um, the, the bread maker or something like that. <laughs> and they had a dream. He interpreted their dream. And then what happened? He got out, right? But he was focused on not himself, but others. I feel like when I got to that point at ORU, like things just started. Boom. Wow. Focus less on me and more on he. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Hollywood. Yeah, hey, so talk to the person right now, man, that's listening, right? And they see, see, so so many times we see people and we we see them in a place of maybe success, right? Success is relative. Yeah. See, we see Moses, you know, NBA, you know, basketball coach, and we don't know the backstory, right? And so this is so important to the person that's listening right now that says, man, maybe I've run up against the wall in my business. Maybe I've run up against the wall in, in an area of my life. Maybe I'm struggling physically. Maybe I'm struggling in a relationship. Maybe my career doesn't look exactly what I thought it was going to look. Maybe I'm an athlete and I'm stuck at the D league. Maybe I'm an athlete. I'm not playing and putting the playing time in that I want and I desire. How important and what could a person do right now? It's very easy to say, hey, I, I replaced the me with he. 
right? But how did you really do that? What's the things you had to do on a daily basis from prayer time to meditation to refocusing? It's very easy to say, okay, well, I'm going to replace the me with you. There's a lot of guys right now listening that the reason that they're not winning in life is because it's been in their will and they've been trying to do it out of their skills, out of their knowledge, and they forgot who orchestrates and directs their steps. And so talk to the person on the side right now that might have got it twisted and has been trying to do it all on their own. And it's all been about me, 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 me. And they forgot that there's somebody that's a director and the orchestrator and the producer of their life. And what could you tell them on the other side right now on how they can take this step to replace the me with he and what you did, bro? Bro, okay, so David died, right? He's dying and he's about to put his, his son uh, Solomon onto, onto the, um, you know, to be king or not. And he gave him one instruction and this instruction basically changed the trajectory of his life, right? He said, my time, my time to die has come. Be confident and determined and do what the Lord your God orders you to do. Obey all his laws and commands as written in the law of Moses so that wherever you go, you may prosper in everything that you do obey God bro like that that's it that was my secret to success like God he, he showed me where like where I need to be because that's where I'm gonna get my blessing that's where I'm gonna get my wife and different things like that right but I also knew that I was destined to like I knew that I was supposed to be in the NBA I knew it I knew it um and I continued to work like crazy but I, I, as I was doing it, I got the focus off myself. I got the focus off myself by um, um, being in my word. I got the focus off myself by, by being intentional with spending time with him. I got my, the focus off myself by, by cultivating relationships outside of a ball and, and, and just making the, seeking to assist others in their dreams becoming a reality rather than just myself going to the NBA, going to the NBA, going to the NBA, right? Like my journey, my journey was was not like the best. You know, I've gone through, through college, freshman year, you know, then the sophomore year, um, I thought like, okay, I went through that mess. It's about, to, it's about to get great. I'm about to do this. And then all of a sudden I get called into the locker room and coach says like, I need you to redshirt. And I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, like what, what is going hey, if on you're, here? If you're listening right now, Yo. this, this means red shirt simply means like, I want you to sit out this year and not play, right? That means you're going to add an extra year, right? So you're going to get a fifth year, but that means you are getting no playing time. Red shirt means you are can't step foot into a game, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so think about that. Freshman year, defeated, right? I'm still have this faith. I'm working hard. <clears throat> and then sophomore year, I'm coming back, Lord. Oh, it's going to be my season. Let's go. Mm. Oh, by the way, we're asking your red sheet shirt, sit out a whole year. That's what Moses is saying. If you don't, if you're not familiar with sports and red shirt, when a coach asks you to do that, man, um, obviously it, the first initial reaction was what? Like right? I got stabbed you in the to stomach. Your stomach, defeated again, but you did it. You did it. And did. so what was the feeling you felt at that moment? And why did you make the decision to say, yes, I will redshirt? It was a selfless act. I knew I had to do whatever I, I had to do in order to help us be this, as, as successful as we needed to be, right? Um, and I just, I, just, I just knew it was a part of God's plan. You know, my, my faith was on 10. God, I know what you showed me. I know what you showed me and I'm going to stand. I'm going to do all I can, right? And then I'm going to just stand. I'm going to trust you at your word, right? Because that's what I'm standing on. And you got to show up. You got to show up, right? So go throughout sophomore year. Then they come, uh, you know, I had like a, a come to Jesus moment, man, and um, you know, just different things are ha was happening. My focus kind of got off a little bit, but then I decided, you know what, forget all that. I'm gonna focus on my relationship with Christ. That's one reason why Old Roberts University is the best university in the world because it, it it helped me cultivate that relationship with Christ. It helped me to to really focus on man. This is the, the Christian is not a religion. Christianity is not really a religion. It's a, it's a relationship with Christ, man, that's what propels you into greatness in a sense, you know? So um, did that and then come, be, lo and behold, junior year, senior year, that's when God started like, okay, Moses, you've been trusting me, boom, you know? Um, and that's hey, what we, we started did we going. Pull you out, did we pull you out of red shirt? Oh my goodness, yes. Okay. Yeah, so that was like a waste of a year. <laughs> so, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so don't skip that part. That's sick, bro. That's like, so this yeah. is another big decision that you have to make, right? So it's sophomore yeah. year, yeah. right? Yeah. It's the end of the year, right? And Absolutely. you're in the so it's, 
towards yeah it's towards the towards the end of the year we get a lot of and this is like god what are you doing bro like <laughs> he's so sneaky so a lot of our guys get hurt i think jonathan blewett gets hurt ken tut gets hurt i think it, 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 folks gets hurt something and it was like man moses we need you and i'm like wait what if so if i if i play that means i forfeit the rest of this year i don't get this year back but then again it's like okay god i trust you let's go this opportunities like this don't just fall in your lap right let's do it so I did it, um, and I'm playing. And then all of a sudden, what happens whenever they get hurt? They come on back. And when they came on back, I was right on the bench. So it was like a, sort of a, a waste of a year in a sense to, to those looking in. But I knew, okay, God, I, I, I trust you, right? Um, so that happens. And then, man, junior and senior year, it started to blow up. So you know, Mo. We went to the NCAA. So Mo. You say what? So, yeah. so, so think about this for a second, right? Because this is important. Faith without works is dead. Dead, baby. What are you drinking over there, man? Is that the win all day? Can, can you get a little Oh, yeah, that's the win all day mug, man. Can you take a little sip with the pinky up, bro? Holla. Yeah. <laughs> you feeling me? Win all day mug? <laughs> all day, baby. <laughs> so so here's, what I, here, here's a powerful message for people on the other side listening. Yeah. So many times when we get defeated, right? We're not seeing things in life immediately how we want to. Our marriage doesn't look the way that we expect it to look, right? Yeah. Our athletic career doesn't look the way we expect it to look. Our business doesn't look. You know what human beings do naturally? We retreat. We pull back. We do less. We work less. I can make this statement on this show right now that there's never an athlete that I've been blessed to work with and train quit. that worked harder than Moses. There's never. Don't quit. There's never. Okay. And Moses, even during the time where they said, you're going to red shirt, you're going to red shirt means you can't even get in a game. You're a practice player. You're work. a spectator. I'll Moses work. was working in the gym. He was getting up earlier before class to get shots up. He was working after practice. He was putting time in, in the weight room. He was I'll studying. Work. He was being diligent, bro. What do you say to the person on the other side that might say, hey, you don't understand, Mo. My marriage doesn't look the way it does. You don't understand, Mo. I I've been in the D League four years, five years. I don't know if I'll ever make the NBA. I want to trust in God like you're telling me to do. And that's cool. And I'm trying to believe. But you're now you're telling me I got to work hard for what? Maybe it's all in vain, Mo. Why should I work hard? Maybe it's never going to come. Mo, what could you say to that person? Because you grinded. You put the work yeah. in harder than anybody when there was nothing at the end to even – there was no reward. There was no expectation even get in the game and you're working harder than people that are going to be put in the game every single day. I work, I work, I work and I work and I work and I fight and I grind, even though God tells me what, what's going to happen and it's not happening. I work. Why? Because it's not about me. It's not about you. You keep going and you keep fighting for your marriage because it's not about you. It's about those kids. It's about your wife, right? You keep going within your career because it's not about you. It's about those people that are connected to you, right? The, the, your obedience is connected to other people's blessing. I went through all that I went through because other people needed to see me fail. Other people needed to see me grind. Other people needed to see me be down in the, in the valleys low. So that way when I'm the mountaintop, they know, man, God, he serves a mighty God. Whoever he has his faith in, I want that. You get what I'm saying? That's why I work. That's why I continue to go. And that's why my life has gone the way that it's gone. So I went to an old Roberts University. Yeah, I went and I, I got, I, I know I'm supposed to be in the NBA. I know I'm supposed to be in the NBA. God, you said I'm, I'm going to be in the NBA. So I continue to go. I get drafted in the G League. I'm in the G League. One, two years. It has not happened. The contracts in the G League ridiculously low god i can go be i can go make more money overseas i can go come no moses stay in the g league you're in the g league um so i'm doing that and like things aren't just they're not going the way that i want them to go because i want to be in the league right i was uh, prop there's people that have spoken oh moses is going to be in the nba uh in my life for my entire life and it's like yo okay god this is the when is it going to happen right when am i going to be playing in the league Right. So I continue on in my career, 11 years or whatnot. Um, and I, I, I almost get there. I almost get there. But I didn't get that call up. I didn't get the call up. My, my family's growing. I met my wife at Old Roberts University and we're having kids. We're having like and we were making this amount of money. I think it was like eleven thousand dollars. My wife and I, 
it was like, how can we got, how are we going to like, okay, we're playing for six months. We're getting this amount of money, but in the summers, what are we going to do? Bro, it got to the point where my wife and I, we had to get on food stamps in order to survive. Like it was ridiculous. It got to a point where we had, there was a spot in Des Moines uh, where you, 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 you donate uh, plasma you got, and you get like 50 bucks a pop. We would go and do that like weekly so we can just pay for gas. It was ridiculous. Like, God, yo, I can go make some, I'm like, what's up? You know, but I, I didn't allow that to defeat me. I just kept freaking going because I knew that he has a plan for me to prosper, a plan for hope in the future. I knew it. So I kept going. Right. And then all of a sudden I get called to play for Team USA. Then all of a sudden I get called to, to do these different things in the G League, do an apprenticeship within the league office and all this stuff starts happening. It's like, OK, God maybe this is what you're talking about, right? So I just kept going and I kept going. And then throughout my um, uh, professional career going overseas, and then all of a sudden I get my, I get my opportunity. I get um, invited to the, uh, to the New Orleans Pelicans vet camp. I'm there. It's like, God, yes, we did it. All the pain, everything is paying off. We're doing it. Game one, I get called into Monty Williams' office. Moses, we decided to let you go. I'm like, yo, yo, wait, no. I've been waiting my entire life for this. There's no, you can't take this away from me, right? But lo and behold, yeah, it's time to go. Now I'm like, God, no, no, man. I, I, you said this is where I'm supposed to be, and now I'm out. I was only supposed to be here for two weeks. You know what I'm saying? And then I just, I just kept going, Jay. I just kept rocking back into the G League, grinding. Then my, my family's getting large. Like I have, I have five kids. I have a beautiful wife. We got, I got to go overseas, and I got that release to go. Then we went. My, I mean, we lived in man. We lived in like nine different countries, man. 18 different cities within our career, you know? Um, we just continued to grind, continued to go. And it got to a point where it kind of like, I was like, okay, maybe the, the NBA is not where God wants me to be, right? Maybe I'm not supposed to play in the NBA, right? Um, but I never I never lost hope. I kept grinding and the people asking me, like, yeah, I'm gonna get there. Like you see my Instagram back in the day, like, yeah, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get there, right? Um, so. My last season playing professionally was in Russia. And um, in Russia, it was like, I played the best basketball I ever played like in my life, my professional career. Um, and when that happens as an American, Sakhalin, Russia. When that happens as an American, contract goes up. Um, uh, um, the people just want you on their, their, their team. You know, everything is just amazing. But then I just felt that same voice that I felt when I stepped on campus at Oral Roberts University. And that voice was like, Moses, you're done. I need you to be done. And I'm like, wait, what? There's no, 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 no. This can't, this can't be, this can't be God. What do you mean I'm done? Like I'm about to make a bag out here. I'm about to get paid like crazy because I'm just, do, I'm doing well, right? I need you to be done. And it was, it was probably the hardest time of my life because man, I'm supposed to be in the NBA father. Like this is, this is where you, this is where you take it. You told me that's where I was going to go. Like, what's up? I've gone through all this. And now you're telling me it's done. So that happens. And then um, I go to this, I'll never forget it, this small Korean Russian church. I get that feeling that day. And then we have, it says off day. So I just decided to go to church. So I go to church and the, um, they had a, a visiting pastor. And that pastor's like, yo, I just want to do something different today. Um, I want everybody to stand up and pray for each other. And I'm like, yep, okay. Do they speak Russian in here? I don't know what's going to happen. But I'm going to stand up and I'm just going to pray. So I, st I stood up, started praying, everybody, and I'm like six five, everybody else is like five three or whatever. <laughs> but I get up and all of a sudden this small Korean lady comes up to me and she's like, can I pray for you? And she starts praying. I'm like, go ahead. And all of a sudden she switches it and she's in, speaking in English. And she says, I feel like the Lord is telling me that you're supposed to make a decision. And that decision is gonna change the trajectory of your, of your life, but you need to make it. And you don't wanna make it, but you need to make it right now. And immediately I was like, wait, 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 whoa, 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 what? And she said, I see you going up a staircase of stairs and you're going up so fast in levels like never before. Um, but it's not going to happen if you don't let go of this. And then right there and then I was like, OK, maybe that's confirmation. Let's do it. Right. So I call my agent. I call my family. I call like boom, boom, boom. And people are like, but what are you doing? You and your prime, you're playing well. Right. Um, but I decided to do it. And then all of a sudden, bro, when I did it. Mr. Mike Carter, because my, my, my thought was like, man, if I say buy the ball, like, what am I going to, this is how I'm putting food on my, my family's plate. Like, this is how I'm providing, right? But God's like, let it go, let it go. And I did, I did. And 
that that day I did, I got a call, you know, from um, Mr. Mike Carter or Roberts University. He's like, Moses, I got an opportunity for you back at the university. Would you be willing to come out? And I'm like, yo, God, all right, let's do it. You know, so that's why we moved back to Tulsa. I was done playing. Um, so I did uh, uh, did some work over at Old Roberts University, which is amazing. Um, but then Jay, bro, this is the, like, there's a meme out there. And that meme is, uh, you know, Jesus is, it's a picture of Jesus and a picture of a little girl. And Jesus has a big, huge, fluffy, uh, like, uh, uh, teddy bear behind his back. And he has his hand out like this to this little girl. And this little girl, she's holding her little scraggly, um, teddy bear with the eyes poked out, the, the fur is coming out, whatever, whatever. And God's like, yo, give me, give me that bear. I have something better for you. And this little girl's like, yo, no, this gives me security. No, I'm, I'm good. I, I need it. It helps me be, be who I am. And, I, and she did like, and God's like, give it to me. I have something. He has something better back here. And every time I see that meme, I think of myself in my, in my career, in my life. I was holding on to ball, this NBA. Like, God, no, this is how it's supposed to happen. I'm supposed to go as a player. It's going to be like, no, no, I need this, right? But then I was like, yeah, you know what, Father, here, take it, right? And when, when I gave up, whatever God told me to give up, give up, Jay, bro, ridiculous. So I go to Oral Roberts University, right? Uh, I take that job. Then all of a sudden, um, and all of a sudden I get asked to, to coach on, on the women's team at Oral Roberts University. And I'm like, yo, okay. Like I get, I get asked, like handed to me in a sense. Um, so I take that. I was like, okay, God, first step. Then the second, the second thing. So I'm coaching for about four months, four or five months. Then all of a sudden I get a call from a, uh, a coach that coached me in, in, when I was in the G League. And he's like, hey, what, what are you doing? And like, ah, I'm coaching at the, at the university, you know, living my best life, living a dream. So how would you like to coach in the NBA? I was like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold on. What? Is this a joke? Like, what are you, what are you talking about right now? And apparently he just got the head coach job um, for Indiana. Um, and it was, it was for real, for real. So we made the jump and it was like, okay, God, all of this for this. Like in my mind, I thought, okay, God gave me this word and it's going to happen the way I want it to happen. Like it's going to happen as a player. I'm going to be in the NBA. I'm going to do well. I'm going to use the platform to, to do this and that and as a player. But God is like, no, my ways are not your ways. <laughs> His ways are greater and more profound, right? He wanted that. that I'm in the NBA now. And I'm, I mean, but this is my second year, so first year with Indiana and second with, with the Minnesota Timberwolves. So I am here with the Minnesota Timberwolves as the director of player programs um, and also assistant player development on court as well. And it's been amazing um, because yeah. I'm, I'm given the opportunity to, to impact lives. So Bro, I know it's a long story, but that's me in a nutshell. You said so many powerful things, Mo. I'm getting, I'm getting emotional like over here because that's why I just let you talk <clears throat> because I want you to share because I think the first thing, like at ORU, after you redshirted, you come out that year, junior and senior year, you absolutely lit it up, right? We had some of the winningest seasons we ever had at ORU. You won uh, one of the top three-point uh, you know, shooters in the nation. You, you, you won all conference teams. You took us to the NCAA tournament. Um, and those last two years, junior and senior year, were what you imagined you would look like in college as a basketball player. And I yeah. think um, I think that was an awesome, you know, story. We didn't touch on that a lot, but those junior and senior year, obviously, you're a very humble individual, but you absolutely dominated, right? You absolutely dominated the basketball court. But more importantly than that, bro, like the impact that you made on people's lives at ORU was so much bigger than basketball. Amen. There's still people to this day that follow you because they just need to be around Hollywood. Mm. And I think it's because they saw, and, and I say this, I say this, it's coaches even, bro. It's coaches. Yes. It's coaches that even had the opportunity to coach you that said, I, I just the fact that I got to rub sh shoulders with Moses and coach Moses made me a better coach, made me a better human being. Watching his journey, watching how coachable he was as an athlete, watching him as a teammate, watch him how he said he stayed steadfast through adversity, through obstacles, through the storms and the seasons of life and never abandoned that dream. There's people yeah. listening and watching right now. They've given up on their dream. Like, bro, you got red shirted. You came out of red shirt. You got tossed around nine countries, 18 different cities, 
Geely, Geely, uh, you know, then, then you, then you hear from God to abandon your dream. Right. And then this lady confirms it. And then you come back and you're working and you're like, what's going on, Lord. Right. And so look at how so many people in life, they, they, they're, they're, they abandon their dream. And today I believe this episode, the one thing, the one thing, if you're listening right now, you're watching right now that you might've not heard anything else we said, it's, I believe confirmation that some of you on this call right now are going to reawaken your dream. You're going to take the dream that you know God put on your heart, that thing. And because of Moses, the inspiration, the, the, the motivation, you're going to borrow that hope and believe again. And I believe through your story of full circle, how many years later now in the NBA, maybe you're not playing, but your, your, your dream has become a reality. And there's people that abandon their dream, Hollywood. There's people that have abandoned their dream. At ORU, you didn't understand everything that was going to go on, but you did meet your wife. You met, yeah. now, now you have beautiful kids. That's a whole that's, nother, that's a whole nother amazing story how you pursued her and, 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 and got a beautiful, amazing wife that, that, that took this ride with you all these years, bro, to all these oh. countries, you know, I mean, getting donating blood just to put food on the table, food stamps, because Moses had a dream and his wife said, bro, I'm with you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. And I cannot, I cannot even stress right now the importance of not abandoning your dream and being so steadfast to not get distracted and know that your steps are ordered. And if God puts that dream in your heart, today might be the day for you to reawaken that dream. Mo, what would you say about the people that need to dream again that are listening or watching this call today, bro? All right. So um it's funny you touched on Sarah, man. Jeez, Louise, bro. Um, I couldn't have done what I did without her, right? Because, oh, God, I had this beautiful girl that I'm taking around the world and we're not making, we're not making ends meet, you know, and she's, she's there. She's there no matter what. Baby, I'm going to help you get to your dream. Forgive, she put her career on the back burner just to help me get to where I'm going and I'm not getting there. And then all of a sudden it happens. But I have three things, three things. Um, we have greatness inside of us. God has given us dreams and aspirations to do certain things, right? And, you know, we can't do it on our own. First and foremost, we can't do it on our own, okay? But then, okay, so I guess it's four, four points, but trust, obedience, and support, right? Um, trusting God in his word and, and, and the dream that he's given you. Like trusting God no matter what, right? Um, if he says he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And you got to believe it no matter how things look like. Right. And then obedience, like okay, the trust factor. And you got to obey. Like he's going to tell you to do things. He's going to tell you to do things that make you feel uncomfortable, but you got to get comfortable feeling uncomfortable because that's when you grow and you grow. And that's how you, you, you allow God to do whatever he does. Okay. He's doing it. Okay. I can trust him with this. I can trust him with this. Like we were so uncomfortable doing so many things, man, living in little apartments, man, going like, bro, it was so like nerve wracking having to go like I, I'm in a, in a city of Des Moines and like we won a championship and everything, but bro, I had to go get food for my family using food. I mean, food stamps and all that is great. Right. But it's like, man, God, I'm supposed to be in the NBA. Like, and now I got like, I got to fend for like, Ah, it was just so tough. But anyways, I had to do things that God wanted me to do. I had to follow his instructions. I had to obey. So trust God in his dream that he has for you. Then you obey whatever he needs you to do. You have to have obedience no matter what. Even if you don't understand, obey. Obey in the third, I think, is the most important, right? And that's support. Like, you got to surround yourself with a solid support system. And when I think about support, I think about the story of Moses when he goes up to that mountain whenever they're fighting the Amalekites. Like, God gave him instruction. Oh, it's a perfect story. God gave, God, God gave him instruction, right? He had to trust what God said. Walk up the mountain. You guys are going to win. Then the, the second thing is obedience. God said, lift up your arms and you guys will win. You guys will win. So Moses is doing it. And they're winning. They're winning. Okay, God. You know, but Moses probably Moses is like, man, I want to be on the front lines with my with my with my with my soldiers. I don't want to be up here, right? But he didn't care. He obeyed God and he went up there and he lifted up his hands, right? But when, when those hands started to go down, he started to get tired. Like they're at war for a long time, he starts to get tired, right? And then they start losing. But this is so profound. He had two people up there, Aaron and Ur. 
they were up there and they saw his hands going down. He saw that he, they were losing out there and they knew, man, in order for us to win, he has to have his hands up. What did they do? They went up to Moses and he started lifting up his hands. They started um, like assisting him and put, putting a rock under his butt so that way they can win, right? To have success. That's to my third point. You got to have support. Like as you're going towards your dream and you're obeying God and you're trusting God, you have to have people to surround you to help you get to where God is calling you to go. And that's why I get so emotional when I think about support because I think about my wife. My wife supported me for so many years. She, she watched me go through my ups and downs. She watched me when I have a bad game. She, she, she assisted me whenever I went through this crap. She said, Moses, you got it. God showed you what you're going to do. God showed you. You got to trust and you got you to gotta, you gotta continue to believe. You got to continue to believe. But if I wouldn't have had that, if I didn't have Coach JC continue to motivate me throughout my career, I couldn't have done whatever I've uh, done through Christ, right? So trusting God obeying his voice and surrounding yourself with people that will lift you up and motivate you and elevate you and encourage you um, uh, to, to be who God has intended you to be. Powerful, bro. What a word, what a word. And you might be listening right now and watching and wondering, man, why, why are they getting so emotional? Like if you're listening and watching, you've been through some stuff and you fought for dreams. I've watched Mo. I understand what he had to do. I had to fight through certain situations in my life to not abandon dreams the sacrifices they made, the grind to not abandon a dream that God put on their heart, to stay steadfast. Um, and I believe that's the time where you build character. I believe that's the time where you yeah. build integrity. That's the time that you go through that many times breaks people. But that is the times that made Moses who he is today. That is why Moses is on this win all day show right now. And that's why Moses is making the impact he's making. And Mo, it's a pretty cool story too. Like I remember when you proposed to Sarah, on the basketball court at, at, uh, at ORU during uh, homecoming. And she said, yes. And you guys took this journey together. Now you have yeah. 18 kids, 18 kids, right? <laughs> Five kids, man. Five kids taking the journey around the world with you. Mo, so, so yeah, show that picture, man. Look at this beautiful family. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And if you think Hollywood's fire, man, his wife could preach. What? Hollywood. Beautiful, Miss man. Hollywood. Man. beautiful and then support supports big but i think we're also talking about marriage guys like who you yeah. get married to can make or break you like this is so powerful and so Mo, i want you to i want you to talk a little about this man like the thing that the thing that when you're faithful with a little god makes you rule over much absolutely and, and and you've been so faithful with the little you've been so faithful with each step of the journey and one of the things that I believe has elevated you in where you are today and where you continue to be is your spirit, your heart of compassion, your heart of empathy, your heart yep. for people and yep. your people person. Yep. And again, this is why I call you Hollywood. You change the environment. People want to be around you. The thing I respect about you so well is there's very few people that are strong, steadfast in their faith and what they believe. This is how it is. You know, and you're very stern on that. I believe that God sent his son to die on the cross. I believe in Jesus. I believe in salvation. Uh, I, like I've watched you, like I could see it in your eyes where you're so, you're so dead to the world because you're so alive in what you stay so steadfast for and believe. And that's trusting in what you believe, not religion, but the word of God and Jesus. And so one of the things that most people can't do, right? They can't relate to people. I've yeah. watched you put yourself in so many different environments, bro. Ridiculous. And everybody loves you. Like, and I want you to talk about that for a second. How, how, how are you so relatable? How are you so loved? How are you so, I, and it's not that you fit in. It's that spirit that, that draws people. I've seen you put in secular environments and Christian environments and environments around so many different people but any environment that you put Moses in, people say, I want to be around him. Moses shifted the environment. He shifted the entire atmosphere. And I think that's one of the reasons people do business with people they like, right? You're a very likable guy. What, right. do you have a strategy? What, what do you do when you walk in these environments that makes you love on people the way you do in a way where people say, man, I want a relationship with Moses. I need to be around Moses. You make people well, feel such in a certain way that they need to be around you. Well, first and foremost, like that, that, that's all God. 
you know, uh, and God has embedded the love that I have for people into me. It's ridiculous how much I love people and it just spews out of me. I want to know how you're doing. I want to know how, how's your family? I want to know what, what makes you tick. I want to, it's, it's, it's just ridiculous. And it's just, um, there's one thing that I do, <laughs> Um, and everything that I like, when I know I'm about to go interact with somebody, like I, I pray this prayer and I say, God, I pray that you may allow your Holy Spirit to be my mouthpiece, Father. And I pray that you may allow your Holy Spirit to be my mindset. Mm. I pray that you may speak through me, right? And just allow, just you be me in a sense. He said, in the, in the word it says, they'll know you are my people by your fruit, Right. Just by, by who you are and what you do and what your values are different things like that. So I just allow that to just be me. Like I, I, to this day, I, I don't know how. Like, it, 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 not the first one to say it. It's to the point. It's like, man, are you serious? Like, <laughs> they people just they they gravitate. Yeah, it's not they go, don't gravitate to me. They gravitate to what's in, what's inside of me in a sense, right? But that inside of me w- would not be in me if I didn't first uh, uh, sort of like cultivate that, you know. In the Bible, it talks about there's so many powerful men of God in the Bible, right? You got Joseph, you got David, you got you got uh, uh, just so many King Solomon and all of those all those people in the Bible. Like when they talk talk about their stories, there's one common theme, and that theme is, and God was with Moses, and God was with Joseph, and God was with David, and God was with Noah, and God was with with King Solomon, right? But the only reason why God was with them is because David was with God. Solomon was with God. Joseph was with God. Daniel was with God. Joseph was with God. They communed with God and they spent time with God so they can learn God, so they can be, to have the characteristics that, that, that Jesus had on this earth, loving, tenderness, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, you know, all, all these amazing things. Um, so I, I, I would say the reason why that spews out of me is because I take advantage of just being with God. Like I want to learn you. I want to be. I want to be around you. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to hear what you hear. I want to love the way that you love. I want. You know what I'm saying? I just want to have those characteristics. And I believe because I am speaking those things and believing those things, I'm being those things. I love it, bro. What a word. What a word. What a word, man. And so talk about this a little mo. Like now you're at a place in the NBA. You're coaching. And your, 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 your role is player development, right? And okay. so when you were at ORU and people that listen to win all day and know me and what I stand for, what I'm about, right? It, it's not being one dimensional, right? It's building the best yeah. version of you that you can win, you will win, you must win. But how do you do all that? Day. Through personal development, right? Yes. And so you cannot neglect the gift that's inside of you. And, and so for you as an individual, right? We started with strength and conditioning, right? At ORU, that's how we met. You really bought into the whole person mantra of ORU, you really bought into spirit, okay. mind, and body, right? Come you on. really bought into um, getting uncomfortable, right? And doing the things that most people don't want to do, right? Creating vision for your life, you know, uh, power in your words. We talk about that. A lot of the things to develop you as a human being, and that's become a big part of your life, the personal yep. development, right? Yes. So talk, talk a little about, we talked earlier about getting uncomfortable, you said you got to get uncomfortable. If you want to win, you got to get comfortable getting uncomfortable. I believe there's a lot of people listening right now that their life's too comfortable. And on the other side of them getting uncomfortable is where they're going to see their miracle, their breakthrough. And so many times it's, we live in a society where everybody wants to coddle everybody. There's, there's participation trophies. And, and like for you over these years to elevate, to get to the place you are right now of player development, what's yeah. some of the things you've done to get uncomfortable and what's some of the things you've done to on a daily basis right? To develop you. You didn't stop training, even though you're not a basketball player, right? You still started to condition your mindset, your emotions, your spiritual life, your physical conditioning, your spiritual life, or excuse me, your family life, right? And so we look at all those pillars, right? Throughout Win All Day, what's some of the things that Moses Ihambe does and is intentional in doing when it comes to training him physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, relationship-wise in those areas? Again, Oral Roberts University. Ah! shaped me (laughs) um but mind body and spirit three right um it's like peeling an onion right in a sense you go through all these 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 these, um layers in a sense moses ihambi the core 
But around that core, it's just layers of I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a professional, I'm a coach, I'm a uh, 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 just a, a businessman, I'm a like uh, so many things, right? And because it's just not Moses, it's all those things. I have to get developed in the whole person type of way, right? So what I do is I'm I, I, I'm intentional with spending time in my word, right? Spiritual growth, spending time with God, spiritual growth. I'm in I'm in. In, in, uh, in tune with um, my, my body, like working out and different things uh, as a professional basketball player. Like I had that goal of, man, in order for me to compete at the highest level, I got to keep my body and, and, and stretching and all that kind of stuff to, to be the best that I could be. But that doesn't stop when I'm done playing. Like I also got to do those things now because I know I've been fine tuned for 11 plus years with working out. And if I stop working out, my, my body and everything's just going to be out of funk. So my body, I work on my body like crazy. But then even when I say body, like mind, body, spirit, like it doesn't mean just only me, my physical body. Right. And in the word, it says whenever you get married, you become one flesh, you become one body. Right. So my marriage, my family like spending time with my family, spending time with Sarah and being intentional with dates and different things. I had a date last night, it was amazing. <laughs> um, but then also you got, um, you got your mind, right? Taking advantage of, you know, you, you are what you speak, right? So speaking things, uh, um, I, have, I have a big mantra, I have my, my, my winning confession, I have my like 10 commandments, right? How can you be Moses and not have 10 commandments for your life, right? <laughs> So I got my 10 commandments that I, that, I, that I speak every single day and just cultivating a mindset of just growth um, and, 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 and then also like reading. Like when they try to hide something from you, they put it in a book. You're only as smart as the last book you read. So I'm on my, I'm on my, my grind over here. You know, as you see back here with these, all these books, I just try to grow as much as possible, right? I just, the main thing is I'm intentional with doing different things that will help me to grow in my spirit, my body, and my mind. Yeah, powerful, bro. Guys, and Moses, just so you guys know, Moses is a student of Win All Day, right? He's talking about Ten Commandments. Yes. We're like, the Bible has Ten Commandments. One of the things we teach at Win All Day is you should have Ten Commandments for your life. That's values. That's things you live by. How many people every single day, you might be listening right now, you don't have a, a directional guide. You don't have a GPS every single day. You're making decisions based off of feelings, right? <laughs> off of emotions, right? When you have values for your life, that becomes your GPS, your directional guide. That's how you make decisions on a daily basis that are going to allow you to win, right? Moses is talking about being intentional, guys. That's the win all day playbook. Don't forget about it, right? Winalldayplaybook.com. You guys, so, so Moses, we're talking about actions that lead, that create habits, right? You yeah. are now working with some of the highest performers in the world, NBA basketball. Come on, baby. Right? NBA basketball players. And yes. so, with that, with that, you working with these NBA basketball players, you had a stint in the NBA, you played professional basketball all these years, you're one of them, right? You relate very yep. well. What for you has been the toughest part? What has been the, what has been the most challenging part, okay, of my dream was to play in the NBA. My dream was to play. I'm not playing in the NBA, but I'm in the NBA, and now I'm a mentor and I'm helping these guys develop, but obviously there had that there, there, there had to be there had, there had to be a transition there. That's got to be that's got to be tough, right? You're around this every day. Your dream was to play in the NBA, right? You're in the NBA, but you're not playing. Do you ever deal with that kind of like, man, Lord, do I still have it? Well, I'm supposed to be playing, and it's like, like how do how do you overcome that? And how do you deal with that? What's the toughest part of that? Like that's got to be a challenge for you, bro. It has to be. So the. Super unique part of my job is, okay, so I'm director of player programs. That's my emphasis, right? But because of my background uh, with playing and coaching, they've, I've, I've been asked to assist in player development, right? Which means helping the guys on the court and, you know, different things like that. And part of that job is playing against our guys, like going up and down with our guys and hooping with our guys. And um, my bucket is full in regards to <laughs> your boys still got it. <laughs> but... Be, because I'm able to play and go against these guys and different things like that, I don't really like like the, the the thought of man, can I still do this? I honestly think I do. I mean, I have I have people. I'm not boasting on myself, but I have guys out there. It's like, man, give him a ten day. Give him a ten day. Why why we signed? What's the name? We should have just gave Moses a ten day. He's right. Yeah. Here. You know what I'm saying? And in my mind, I'm thinking like, yeah, give me, give me <laughs> <laughs> but um, it was it's it's just been amazing. 
but with with the uh the the uh where god has in the space that i am right now like i'm like director of player programs are ba basically what i do and is i assist our guys in being the very best version of themselves and through their and, and i do that through assisting them in winning all day mind body and spirit so basically taking what i do and implementing it to them and helping them grow in a sense um and it's just been it's it's been awesome there's been some times where it's like Okay, you, you start to think the man you got you, yo mo you got millionaires over here. They have so much money, and the enemy he, he, the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, dude. Like whenever the enemy feels threatened by you, like he knows that, uh, that, that making an impact in these guys' lives. Like, and I'm not boasting on myself or whatever, but even if it's just spiritually, you're that that the enemy sees that he doesn't want that to happen. So he's going to hit you with, with, with just different thoughts. Like he comes to kill, still destroy, right? And the first place he comes is in your mind. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's been all love and dandy. No, I've been going through things like, like the, just the thought process of, man, am I, am I, am I, um, am I capable of doing this? Am I in the right place? Am I, you know, but immediately when I hear those things, I just combat it with the word of God. Like when Jesus was in the wilderness and the enemy came and to try to tempt him or whatnot, the first thing that will come out of his mouth, that his mouth is, and it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes with it. You know what I'm saying? It is written, meaning the word of, of God. Like whenever I get a thought of, man, man, these guys, are, are they listening to me? Am I supposed to be here? It's like, nah, b b b trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your understanding. It is written, God has placed you here for this moment, just like Esther, for a moment just as this. Right. And it's not you ain't got to understand it right now, but you keep on going. You keep cultivating relationships. You keep showing that you love, you love, you love, you love, you love. Like it's like, bro, it's it's um, it's a uh, it's it's a grind. Right. Even up here. Like, yeah, I'm in the NBA, but it's still a grind. There's still growth that needs to happen. There's still relationships that I got to cultivate. I'm, I'm, I'm I've been given lives to just kind of uh, uh, grow in a sense. I love it, bro. I love it. So, so, so think about this for a second, right? You got Moses Ihambe Hollywood goes on this journey, right? Comes back now to be in the NBA, right? Not playing, might get a 10 day. We're not sure if he's still got that jumper. We'll find out, <laughs> but, but might get a 10 day, right? But God, God had a different direction for him in the NBA. And now his role is developing other people in the NBA. Yeah. Guys, I want yeah. you to think about this for a second as we conclude this show. This is so powerful, okay? We are talking about guys that are high performers. That doesn't mean they're perfect, okay? They're human beings first. Statistics yeah. don't lie, okay? Yeah. The statistics of NBA and NFL guys that the divorce rate, right, uh, situations with substance abuse, you know, uh, retiring, going bankrupt are real situations that people know there is a lot that goes on within professional sports that Moses steps have been ordered. Maybe God said, Mo, I don't need you playing. I don't need another player. I need a mentor. You've been faithful with a little. I'm raising you up now and making you rule over much, right? Moses, as we conclude this show today, I want you to talk about um, the impact that you believe um, the NBA is having, these guys that you're around, the beautiful people that they are, not just basketball players, and how, and how, and how, hey, what's up, baby, all day, that's my, that's, that's one of Hollywood's beautiful girls, say hello to your fans, say hello to your fans. Hello to everybody. Hi. Who else we got? Who else we got? We got baby on the salon. Tell everybody who you are, tell everybody who you are. My name's Sayla. Sayla, how awesome is your daddy? How awesome am I? Uh, He's so awesome. Heaven and back. Heaven and back. Whoa. Yay. Do you love going to the basketball games, girl? Yay. Mo, <laughs> she's a rock star. She's so beautiful. Yeah. She's so beautiful. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you joined us, girl. So Mo, tell them this. Tell them this. Bye, Uncle Casey. Bye, girl. We love you. That's my niece. That's my niece. <laughs> Holly, tell everybody this, man. Like, you know, as we conclude this show and wrap it up today, because um, we could talk all day about so many things that you're doing yeah. that are, are amazing. The family life, you just saw one of them jump in like 
Honestly, again, you're in a situation now, you're in the NBA, you're traveling a lot, you're away from home a lot, you, you still have the wife supporting you, right? But there's still, that, there's got to be that conflict. You leave the family, right? There's that, when I travel, there's like that guilt. You're like, oh man, I should be on with the family. What's going but on? But it's funny you say that, Jay. There's, there's no conflict because of intentionality, right? And that's one thing that I'm working with our guys, right? So we're gone so many, like we're about to go on a 10 day road trip. Right. But one activity that I do with our guys, one program that I do is we take letters and envelopes and stamps and we write letters to our families and we say, hey, I'm thinking about you. I know I'm gone, uh, but I'm with you in spirit. I'm encouraging. I'm praying for you. I'm loving you. I hope you're well. Let me know if you need anything, you know, and then we get those letters and we send them out so that our wives and our, 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 um, our children get those letters to. Oh my lord! <laughs> get my those girl. letters. Right. But it, it cultivates that 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 body piece in. in in the relationship or whatnot. So that, 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 that's the, the, um, the thought of, you know, this in a marriage or whatnot. Hey, sweet yeah. girl. Awesome. All day, all day. Well, Mo, I know we got to run, man. We could talk all day. Let's close on this, man. Let's close on this. And then I'm going to have you say the, the win all day uh, the mantra at the end. But so, so what's, what's Mozi Hambe yeah. the next for him? What's the impact that you would like to see um, in the NBA, in major league sports, in regard to player development, personal development, what's the impact that you believe God can have within? Cause I, be, I believe through you, bro. I believe you're going to be a, a, a change a agent in the NBA. I believe guys' yeah. lives are going to be changed like never before. And I believe yeah. guys that have a platform that have power yeah. that have money can be yeah. a conduit to change the entire world. And I believe that's going to start with you. So just talk to us about that impact and what you believe could happen through the NBA and these amazing human beings that you get to work with on a daily basis. So many people, Mo, see them as athletes only, but they're not just athletes. They're amazing people with platforms they're amazing. that are and falling that's the to purpose on their life. And that's the thing, living it, seeing it, and just believing it. Like I, what I want to leave, like it, I want the importance of personal development to be so implemented into the NBA that it's ridiculous. Like be so important that like, that's why I love where I'm at right now because coach Chris Finch sees the, the, the importance of, okay, they have to win in life as well. Like, yes, winning on, on the court is fantastic, but winning in life assists in that. So I want to, I want to, to leave a legacy of man, how assisting our athletes, and winning in every area of their life, right? So that way they can be whole, healthy, uh, uh, amazing individuals because the ball is going to stop bouncing. It, stop boun it, it gets flat for every single person. But when it's flat, then what else? I don't want my athletes worrying about, oh, no, it's flat. What am I going to do? No, let's work on that right now. What are your passions? What are your desires? What do you love? What, what are things that you need to take care of right now so you could set yourself up for the future, what does your marriage look like? Let's let's get rid of this like divorce rate and NBA and all that mess, right? So so having that lasting impact of people winning in every single area of their lives, all day, every day, until whenever, because it's a lasting impact, right? It's not a, only affecting them; it's going towards their, their kiddies, their kids, their marriages, their, their kids' kids. Then there's kids, 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 right? It's generational. Come on, bro. I love it. Hey, introduce, go, the, rest, introduce the rest of your family real quick. Guys, say what's Come up? on. This is, what's this up, is the, baby? This is Titus. Titus. Titus, what's up, my guy? Esther. Yeah. Esther, what's up, baby? <laughs> hey, what's up, Uncle Jay Z, man? <laughs> what's up? Hey, all day, all day. This is the all dream. Day, we love you guys. Hey, Hollywood, man. Too. I know you got to run, yeah. man. So let's finish it with this, bro. Is there, is, there any, is there any last words that you want to say to people listening before I let you go today? We got out. Got it out. There needs to be a part two, though. Let's tell you All that right day. Now. We'll make a part two happen. Let's finish it with this, man. If you could yeah. finish it with saying, you know what? I am Moses Ihambe. I am a winner. I will win and win all day. Can we do that? Yes. I am Moses Ihambe. I, I am a winner, and we win all day. All day. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Come on, baby. Hey, that Hambi. concludes this we're episode. We're going to do it as a team. Say, I, uh, we are Team Ihambe. We are Team Ihambe. We are winners. We are winners. And we will win all day, baby. And we will win all day. Baby. Yeah, Let's yeah. Go. Come on, baby. I love it. Hey, we're missing a couple of the family. We got to get the whole family on here. Yeah, wifey's getting ready. <laughs> Guys, that's Hollywood. That's Hollywood. That's Moses. That's his beautiful family. Moses, we're blessed by you, bro. Thank you for the impact you make on our world, man. We'll continue to believe the best for you. Guys, this is Coach JC. I want to thank you again for listening to this episode of the Win All Day podcast show. And until next time, I want to remind you, you were born a winner. So go win and win 
whole day. 